blah. Y'all already know what it is. Your boy Yako, what it do? The Island to Reality, the whole podcast in Vegas, say Chicago. What up? This is the place where you want to hide from your drama or maybe hide from your baby mama. <laughs> Just kidding. Y si tu quieres cambiar tu vida, if you want to change your life, then subscribe. Cha-ching. And by the way, guys, I just published my first book. It's called Shabbat in Chicago. It's out on Amazon. It's about an audacious single mom who opens her heart and home to five adopted kids while embracing her Latino culture while being Jewish. And guys, today we have a very special guest. I had to bring him on the show. He is a filmmaker, a screenwriter. Oh, man, a producer. Give it up for the one and only Guillermo. What's up, <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for the invitation. Happy to be here and flattering interview entrance for sure. Thank you. Of course, of course. So look, I, I want to share my first time meeting you. So Ali had like a get together for like Thanksgiving, Friendsgiving. And we get there. You're bringing the, the tres leches, right? If I'm not yes. mistaken. <laughs> That's the one. My boy knows how to make dessert. It was fire. And... um. I brought I brought pizza. You know, your boy didn't have time to cook. So I had to bring the pizza. And it was so cool because, you know, when I first met you, you're very nice, very, you know, I could tell you a kind person. It's rare these days to find a a, a nice person in Vegas. You know, usually, you know, it's a hit or miss. And but my favorite time is the second time I met you again at like the kind of like a Navidad special slash party. Um and I love that everyone at the party danced. That was like a memorable time. I was so happy. Um, I think I burned like 300 calories, but it was the dopest experience. <laughs> and um, yeah, so so fam, that was my first take. What about you? What do you remember when we first met? Any thoughts? Yeah, no, it was fun because it was uh, a friend, Ali, that she's so creative and it brought such an awesome group of collective creative people together since the friendsgiving and uh, at first the pizza was great so no no worries on that one i love some good pizza for a good gathering so uh no that was a fun experience getting to know everybody like the, about your writing and the other work that you've done and then this second time for the holiday party and that we were all like dancing and everything so it definitely offset all those cookies that uh, allison made for sure so <laughs> oh gosh so it's 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 um so good to meet good creative people in vegas that are always down to like collaborate work together uh and it's because it can be a rough town on top of it already being a rough business sometimes so no, it's true. It's true, fam. Uh, and, and you know what? I, I got to say, I, I love your energy. I, I love this because, you know, I could tell that, you know, from from the experience meeting you, I could tell like, wow, this person has a lot of talents and especially Latino también. You know, that's a big deal. We got to help each other out. That's the only way we grow and prosper. And fam, I, I want to ask you, right? So were you like born and raised in Vegas and how did you get into film? I, I'm curious. We we want you to spill the beans, but not the cheese. OK, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, no, no, actually, no, I'm, I'm from El Salvador. That's where I grew up. I, I was raised there uh, first third of my life now. Um, I was 12 years old when I left uh, the country and uh, then moved to started off in Los Angeles and then eventually moved to Vegas. and. I always had like the sort of that desire to tell stories, you know, you get it from your elders that they sit you down by the radio and stuff. And see, so you were a little kid and you shared a story and that's, that kind of stuck with me. And uh, I've done all sorts of different ways to try to share stories, you know, that I tried YouTube about a decade ago, but school and everything got busy. And then uh, I got into novel writing. So I got two books on the self-published Amazon market and around that 2012-ish time frame, uh, you know, there were so many good movies and so many mo so many things like that that were just getting made at the time. And I was like, holy crap, this is our moment, to, you know, to, to tell our stories. And uh, about, what, eight? It's going to be nine years this year. Uh, I got into production uh, down here in downtown Vegas. Uh, I started off as a production assistant for a couple's game show. It was both a stage and recorded production, and I sort of got through the ropes of 
learning the different roles that it went into stage in, and then eventually made a producer for that show and getting that experience and building that network to a different show as well called the Vegas Talk slash Downtown Podcast. That's where I really built that network, that group of friends and collaborators and uh, that sort of carried on with me uh, when that sh- those all of those shows ended and I became more freelance. And then about mid-2021, I really like truly got into the filmmaking as it's in itself standalone uh helping a friend of mine with his youtube channel so i was got back in the camera doing what i love the most and uh it's just been a journey ever since uh and it kicked off you know thanks to my best friend collaborator rose donahue who also i met her here in vegas uh with the podcast show and uh, we worked together on mo which is the first short that we worked on collaborator co-director co-wrote uh, and start in <laughs> that came out uh, that is currently in the festival circuit and uh, that was sort of what really kicked off that journey in late 2021 and then here we are uh three different shorts later and just an amazing journey meeting so many beautiful people creative people and just collaborators which is that community that you you're building up here in vegas that is a tiny community but a really proud and collaborative one for sure wow i love it i love it fam and you you got to tell us. So, did you go to school for film, or your your degree was different? Was it like? A... <laughs> oh God, this story for this one. Okay, so went to school for engineering, graduated in history, but writing and all of that has just been uh, like self taught, self learned over the years, uh, and it's just learning the ropes, and that's uh, that that's how I got into it but like writing all it every single thing that I've done when it came to school was always like so uh writer focused uh that it just came came, came naturally second hand with the creative injected some time later so wow and, and who would you say is your top three directors that you look up to when it comes down to creating your movie or writing your script who who comes to mind that you look up to Oh, wow. Um, well, when I really got into like the writing and developing stories, I love Chaplin when like the writing of the f- silent field mirror that, of course, is completely different for now. Right. But just trying to figure out like s- storytelling without any microphones, without any sound effects, aside from like whatever little orchestra you could bring around to play in the theater, you know, that's just telling a story with your body language, with your motions and even with like the little writing cards on the screen that that was just so pioneering right and that's sort of something that i really look up to um that I, you know first little short that my brother and i would made like i had a little print out of a photo of chaplin like the, our characters like the guy so we're like okay this is sort of like this the thing of the times right so that's sort of like one of those like muses that i look up to within the film world um but then Spielberg, I did watch a lot of stuff when when I was a little kid. Uh, Spielberg, you know, Indiana Jones, that Jaws, that um, and that, that was sort of like how to tell stories in that medium as well. But you know, n- n- not just like directors, but also like actors. You know, I, I grew up with Cantinflas and La India Maria. You know, like oh. our, our Latino cinema. You know, when I was in El Salvador, then when I was here in L.A. in Vegas, and that was sort of a way to stay connected to your roots, right? Uh, like our humor, our stories, that there's such a heart that we tell with them. And of course, on top of the little shenanigans there are with within our communities, right? So <laughs> can can never go wrong with that as well. So wow, that's amazing. You I can't believe you brought back the what's her name? You said the lady, the real short lady. Lady the, Maria. Yeah, she is the hilarious OG best comedian in that generation. Like our parents grew up with that hundred percent and i love the way she like how she gets into it and like it's funny because there's like i think there was a movie or a show where she went to america for the first time and then when she went to mexico i don't know where she went but i actually met her real like real life one time it was like for this um big event i forgot what she happens to be a surprise guest and it was so cool it was in chicago that's definitely like so for me i grew up more like with um the three stooges you know yeah. i i i love their slap comedy that's kind of like what i got 
you know, my style in the beginning. And yes. then I moved up. I started studying like Jim Carrey, Martin uh -huh. Lawrence. Um, and then I started to kind of make my own style, just taking what they do with their facial expression, you know, mm -hmm. and making it come to life. But brother, that's amazing that you said it. And, and please tell us like, what is the process like? Cause I know there's a lot of writer's block when you're writing a script, how do you keep yourself from not going like stuck or insane? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh wow. Um, well, I mean, for <laughs> writer's block is always gonna come around for sure, because it's either like you're busy or you just like lose that momentum. Uh, but in the past couple of years, when it came more to like, okay, so uh, movies are slowly getting chosen for festivals, right? And and uh friend of mine's recommended to see the Mark Duplass video of like the cavalry is not coming. So it's up to you and your little team that you build together to sort of make your own mark in the film industry. Uh, that was something to like, like a guide almost. Cause when we did our first premiere with Mo at the Phoenix film festival back in 2022, uh, it was like the recommendation of like, people are going to ask you what's next. So I was like, Oh, um, so I was looking back at different ideas that I had, the adaptation of my novel. So like that, those three weeks leading up to the festival, it was like my best writing time because I finished like I finished that first feature adaptation for my novel and then like six different shorts and just to, to have like a bank of ideas ready. Because uh, uh, when, when I was talking to Rose about this, I was like, look, this is how we're going to come prepared along with your ideas as well. So when they ask us and people asked us, what are you all doing next? We had something to present. And every single time we've done an appearance for a festival, we have an idea to present them or go looking back at stuff that we already filmed, like our second movie, a decision that is also on the uh, film festival tours. Wow. So so now that you brought that up, what is the next project? So uh just came out from two. Uh okay. <laughs> we, it was a busy year for both of us last year. So like we didn't get it to do our uh third uh collaboration as co-writers, co-directors. So I did my own short uh back in August uh with beautiful community about relationship dynamics and stuff like that. So another drama. And then I helped out in filming Rose's movie that we filmed also like, you know, coming of age, a coming out story. So it's, it's, that's what we just got out of. So now it's like looking forward to a um, couple of different ideas that I got either a historical piece or another like thriller piece that I want to try to delve so I can sort of continue building a, the portfolio right because like when you're filming shorts i feel like if you want if you can get yourself like a nice little sampling of genres that you can work on uh you're gonna look stronger right yeah for sure because now they see that you're very uh versatile you're very like uh you have a lot of different genres you know because some people they just stick to horror right or like drama <laughs> yes. and that's all they can do now uh -huh. that when they try something else they can't can't of their comfort zone so it's good that you're tackling different angles um I, I love that i love that fam so like is the next project like you, you were saying like is it gonna be like a show or like a movie you think mm, so i have two short ideas from like the story bank that and that and one that i'm currently writing on right now that i have like a historical piece of like uh, minority soldiers because like you see often in like historical pieces especially war film that uh, we focus so much on you know this group of people like your farmers from Arkansas Kansas Texas whatever you know beautiful stories because you talk you, you know the American person going through these horrendous ordeals right in the historical context but oftentimes you you, you lose the sight of like that our communities, the Latino community, the black community, the Asian communities, the indigenous communities, all these struggles that they go through. And oftentimes, like, especially in war film, uh, like in the U.S. perspective, you sort of lose a good chunk of that story. You saw it with what? Miracle of St. Anne or uh, Wind Talkers with Nicholas Cage. So like you tell some of those stories, but they're oftentimes lost because of whatever is going on. So like in this short, here's two U.S. soldiers, minority soldiers, like dealing with like, their journey 
because they stayed in France after World War One, and like now they're helping the French do the same colonization that they thought they were fighting against, type of stuff. So that's the like the sort of synopsis idea of like the conflict of my characters for that historical piece is just finishing the research and then like finding the custom designer for that. That will be like the biggest challenge for sure. Whoa, man, you you really I could tell you know history because that's. That's gonna be uh you know I I can't wait when you invite me to the the premiere and we're already there eating popcorn you know having <laughs> nachos you know what I'm saying with con jalapenos you know we'll be good uh-huh. but no I I really I I really like that brother and let me ask you something so you know this is interesting that you know you moved to Vegas was like tell us like the process of creating that sh- that short you just did previously right how was the tell us the story how you convinced your co uh director and how you got the cast because for people that don't know how to start a film project or yeah you know we want you to give them the tea you know like so we can know what we can watch out for or the process because that would be you know very helpful yeah so um Let's see. For Mo, which is the short that kicked it all off, now in the official filmmaker journey, right? I wrote that script back in 2016. So the story of Mo is of our character named Mo, uh, who has struggles of with his identity, with his name, especially because he hates his name because everybody mispronounces it. And of course, here us, the immigrant experience, right? It's like, oh, yeah, you got the name wrong. Good for trying, though, but that was horrible. So like that's sort of like that covers in the fiction piece for Mo, right? So like that script went through quite a bit of an evolution because I try to film at two different times and either it was the location that fell through the gear, the crew, and of course life happens. So like, uh, there's only so much we can do. And then of course the world ends when the pandemic hits, you know, 2020. So that puts a lot of things in the back burner, but also like the, the perspective, right? The surviving the horrendous ordeal and, and he, especially a collective ordeal like that one. And it's like, you know what? This is kind of like a call back to like getting back to your things. So and chasing what you what your passions are, what you really want out of life. So that's how I managed to get back into like the filming ordeal with like my friend's YouTube channel. And then with that experience and then uh, seeing my good friend Lindsay Cruz, uh, her movie that she did like a little screening here in Vegas back in June 2021. Uh, I spoke to Rose and I was like, I think this is the time to bring back uh, th- to really make this movie come to life. And would you be able to be my co-director for this so we can get, make this happen to- together? Because we have the experience, we know people, and of course we had some gear available to help us film this. So we spent uh, summer of t- the rest of that summer of 2021 like, searching locations, finding the cast, and sort of building the team that was going to be with us for that filming day. Because... Uh, for Mo, we have what three different filming locations for like the fiction part and the bar, uh, which is shout out to the usual place. Uh, the, they were the only we had only one day uh, to film at their location, so that means that we had one day to film all the scenes, rehearse it, and everything else. And that sort of as we edited the script, made it in the way that we we thought this is the way to go with the script. Um, we then look at our talent and. Um, Lindsay, such a great actor, I'm telling you. I was like, let's get Lindsay in here. So she was our bartender for the for the, for the scene at the bar. And then my friend Akil, Akil Evans, who was our host for the couples game show that I worked on, Lovers and Losers, uh, I casted him as like Mo's friend. And then we casted Rose as Jackie, which is J- uh, Mo's boss. And uh, then I was looking at looking around and I had this thought even back in 2017 the second time that i tried filming and i was like you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do them i'm just gonna throw myself on the camera out there because i understand like most struggle a little bit the best in my perspective you know like sometimes um which is something that i learned in like what one of the two film classes that i took in my degree in my last year of college uh, it's like try to put yourself in front of the camera because as a director or as a writer If you limit yourself only to those experiences, sometimes it's difficult to understand what the struggles or like what might be the things that you need to prepare to be either an actor or a director or even a writer. 
get yourself a little bit of knowledge of all the other fields so that you can go in doing your best performance, knowing that you're delivering on how you would write your, your character. And so that's when I cast it myself as Mo here. So <laughs> that was, that was an experience acting for the first time because everybody else in the group had acted before. And then we had two montage scenes. So we brought the great Christopher Brown and Brenda Daly for those other montage scenes. And, you know, I was like the new the new kid, right? Because everybody else had a bunch of movies under their belt, bunch of shows, and here comes uh, me with only like the showman experience from like uh, my show, right? Uh, try to give a performance, so that it was exhilarating, nerve wracking at times too, because I was like, "Am I doing this right? Am I doing this right?" So, <laughs> um, but yeah, we shot Mo in three days. Uh, day one was the bar scene. Day two was running in two different locations uh, with the other talent to film the coffee shop scene, which is shout out to Lume Latte. Great coffee. I love their uh, <laughs> Turkish coffee and their tea. Uh, but they let us film as well um, there. And uh, then we had a different location with one of the nonprofits in town to also give us the permission to use their lobby as the as the doctor's office. So, uh, And then the third day was the documentary component. Uh, which in the weeks leading up to the filming, Rose was like, hey, um, we addressed all the loopholes within the fiction part except one. Because we mentioned, especially one of my lines was, well, you know, in in their infinite wisdom, my parents gave me a different name, may, try to make it unique. So that uh, was the one loophole within, like really seal in the fiction part. So she was like, how about we interview your parents? So I thought, that is a genius idea. Let's do it. The only challenge, though, I told her was my parents have never wanted to be on camera before. Like, yeah, they're supportive of my brother, my friends and myself, you know, all the work that we do. But they have never wanted to be in front of the camera before. So she got a questions, a list of questions ready and uh, I presented it to them and they were like, let's do it. And I was like, wait, really? <laughs> so so getting the parents to agree and like us filming them was like one one of the highlights of like the whole process because by that point especially in the weeks leading up to filming right and like especially the, the days before it's like is the gear ready yeah. if you're gonna have uh uh craft services so like snacks food and that do you have that list ready to make sure that you address any allergies dietary choices is the wardrobe ready is the gear ready are all the cameras ready are the cards formatted do we have cards right and who's going to be there for crew? Because also, it's a team building exercise. It's a team sport doing films. So you got to have somebody in one of these roles because you can't do it all. And, and of course, four or five shorts later, right? It's that like, yeah, build up that team and collaborate with that team. The better you work with that chemistry, you know how the great results you're going to get. Um but you know that was the, that was the highlight once that we filmed on the third day we had a whole 45 minutes of just letting the camera run ask the questions ask a couple once again just just for safety but uh it, it's that was that's just the gift of that process especially especially for mo because like we have now what 40 minutes of footage of not just the nine minutes that are in the film but the other, what, 31 minutes where it's like an interaction with the parents, hearing more of their stories that they don't usually tell. And that's 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 special right there. That's that's memories that one has because we had the experience of making the movie together, but also something for down the line, right? Right. So wow. it's so unique. There's nothing like it. That's why that's why I love this this process, the creative process. There's it's just pure creation. I love it. I love it. I think what stood out too is that you invited your parents to be a part of this film. Um, there was a show I did on, you know, this is back in the day, back in, oh, I can't remember. It won't come in my head, but the name of my, my sitcom was called Take One, Pass It Back. And I had my mom, my aunt, and my aunt who's like, she's like an aunt to me. She's not my blood, but she's like an aunt. And it's funny because my mom ha also never done acting. Um, my aunt never, she's only seen novellas. So this is the closest thing, but like real life. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so funny because the scene is I have this girlfriend and she comes in for the first time. We're having a movie night. You know, we're getting real close. 
and I was young at this time. I was like 23 or something, maybe younger. And um, watching a movie, the yeah. lights are kind of like dark, and we hear the knock, and we open the door. Comes in my mom, my aunt, my other aunt, right? And they're asking her in Spanish, ¿Y dónde trabajas? ¿Y cuánto ganas? And it was so funny. How much you make? Where do you work? And it was just so funny. And do you save? You know what I'm saying? Do you save? Yes. It's so funny. And at the end of the, the, end of the shot, my aunt, the one who's like, it's not my blood, but my aunt, she goes, goes and it's funny. It's like she, she does her little, and then the next, the camera changes to the next one. Yes. And then the other one goes, yes. but it was, Funny shop because we got three different people, and um, it's something that I could always look back. I think that you know to have your parents to believe in your work, in your your passion, it's a big big deal because I feel like you want their approval, right? If I'm if I'm right or wrong, we want them to support us, right? Yes, yeah, so much, so much, because that's like you know it begins at home, right? the support the, the the those words of encouragement that am i doing this right right or do you like what the stuff that i do yeah and, and sometimes they see things that we can't see you know they they may be like mijo i don't know about that you know try something else I was like, okay ma all right i'll i'll check it out you <laughs> see i'll check it out I take notes. I take notes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, man, but that's that's amazing, fam. I, I'm really happy for you. I I could tell you have the voice for radio. You have you. I don't know if if you've done radio. Well, you did say you worked on the podcast, but like, brother, you your voice is very like. I could tell like you 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 definitely know how to use your words. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, it, it took a while to get it going because. Uh, I started developing it once again in the couples game show when I first started, that it was a learning experience because sometimes we didn't have enough crew or supporting. So eventually I started doing so announcing for that. So it was all the getting the energy, right. It kind of like, if you see the price is right, right. Like it, Drew Carey is like calling somebody that it's like, Hey, who are next contestants? And then the announcer that you never see or almost never see. It's always like, Hey, you and you come on down. You know, it, it's sort of developing that craft so that it looks engaging, gets people riled up uh, and excited. Right. Cause that's, that's the part about shows, right. Uh, being energetic enough to do that. And I was thankful to continue uh, working with that in this time period between what 2018, 2020, that uh, I get I got to do a little bit of narrating. So there's a couple of audiobooks that I've narrated for. Not only one of them is mine, but then the other ones are for other authors, just to keep that practice going, to try to develop that voice or like different voices. Uh, and of course, adjusting the volume because what works in a stage show doesn't necessarily work like what we're having right now in a conversation uh, like this. So <laughs> it's, wow. it's it's it takes a while. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's a very. Uh, I, I always highly recommend like young people to learn like public speaking because yes. it's so beneficial. Like when you're sending a proposal to big executive producers, um. If you're at a conference, you know, or a convention, whatever it is, it's so powerful. Um, something I learned from communications, right, with with uh, voice and diction, that was a class I took. They said that it's better to be the first person to go up in um, a convention, you know, a, a keynote speaker. If you're the first one from the six, it's better to be the first or the last because if you are in the middle in between there's so many they're going to forget but the first one is got to be powerful and the last one got to be like a strong finisher so that's something i learned and I, I agree with that i think that if you learn to um even with interviews i remember i went to this big interview like um a networking event and i'm passing on my interviews but i got there first before everyone and so I got to speak with everyone twice and I gave them my 
uh, resume and no lie. That was one of the best advice my cousin gave me and everybody remembered me. That was the best part because they're like, they're going to see over 100 people that same day. So you being the first, you stand out. They're like, man, this mm -hmm. funny Latino, he came in and all pumped up, ready to go, you know, ready to dance bachata. You know, he was on he was on point. We got to get him, you know. So that's that's how I look at it, brother. But um, it looks like Zoom about to kick us out. But uh, fam, bro, one, one more one more last question. W what advice can you give to young people? Get something going. Let's do it. Start it. Uh, because especially now, our phones can film movies. Like they have the quality, and yeah, you you may have to borrow a microphone from somewhere, or you know, borrow a lamp, or like use somebody else's cell phone to to illuminate you. But just get started with what you got, because it's amazing the results that you can get with just one thing. Uh, and the first one is never gonna be good. That's that's that. that there's a truth to that saying. Like, just get it out there. No matter how terrible it might be, it might sound, because ultimately that experience that you get of doing a, a piece of content, especially like a movie, you know, it's nobody can take that away from you. Yeah, it's right there. Maybe not, it's not good, but it's there. And that beats the people that just say, oh, I want to do this. Oh, all these guys suck. No, they, they, some people don't do anything at all. And being proactive, I think that's the term, especially. Being proactive and doing something, you're already 20 steps ahead of everybody else. Wow. Beautiful, brother. Beautiful. So, look, guys, this is the, uh, the Outlet to Reality, the oldest podcast in Vegas and Chicago every Tuesday. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cha-ching! Y'all know where to find me. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, the Outlet to Reality. My Snapchat is Take One Pass It, and my TikTok is at Yakov28. And brother Guillermo, where can my fans find you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram or TikTok at Gilbert Hona. So at G U I L L B A R A H O N A. Uh, there in your in the bio, you will also find my link tree, which can take you to all my books, my IMDb, uh, and uh, the other social media pages that I got on X and Facebook. So uh, yeah, check us out and. Uh, Join the journey. We're always doing something.